this video is going to walk you through how to record PayPal or Intuit Payment Network, any type of merchant service fee that you may incur for processing a payment for one of your customers or clients in QuickBooks. So there's two different ways to do this, and so I'm going to go over both of them briefly in this video. Um, the first way um, is by using an item that you can either put onto your sales receipts or that you can put onto your invoices. So if you're going to set up an item, um, you would go to lists and then item lists. And once you go there, you're going to end up at a screen similar to what you see right here with this particular one. So I've set this up as an other charge. I've titled it PayPal IPN fees. Um, you don't have to put a description in, but you certainly can. I would recommend leaving the amount blank because it's going to change from each payment that you receive from your customers. And then what you're going to actually do here is you're going to actually assign this particular fee to an expense account. And in my case, I have it assigned to PayPal fees. Now QuickBooks is going to prompt you once you finish. And since mine's already set up, it's not going to prompt. But typically PayPal, or I'm sorry, QuickBooks will ask you if you want to truly assign an item for an invoice or a sales receipt to an expense account. And in this particular case, you do indeed want to say yes. So once you have your item set up, what you would do then on an invoice or a sales receipt. All right, so in this example, I'm using an invoice, but the steps I'm explaining here are going to be identical with a sales receipt. You're going to have the full amount that you're charging your customer. Um, so in this case, we have $40, and then you're going to put in your PayPal item that we just set up in the prior step, and then you're going to enter that actually as a negative number. So whatever fee you're charged by PayPal, Square, whatever credit card processing service you're using, you're going to enter that in as a negative. And because you've assigned that item to an expense account, that will actually flow through on your income statement as a positive number under your expenses. So in this case, then it's going to leave the payment amount we actually receive for this particular invoice as $38.78. So then when you go to receive payments from your customer, in this case, this is the invoice we just did and we put the payment fee directly on that invoice as a negative amount. So in this case, we're going to say $38.78. That's the net amount we received from the merchant processor. And we're going to go ahead and hit OK. So the other way to do it, so that's way number one. Uh, way number two, um, you saw I had that secondary invoice set up here for just a flat $20. Here's what we have. So I'm going to receive payment for that particular invoice. And I'm going to put in the full amount here. And we'll say PayPal. Right now, it's going to go to my undeposited funds. Now, this way that I'm explaining right now will only work if you're using undeposited funds. The process I just explained just previously will actually work if you're not using undeposited funds or deposited funds, doesn't matter. Um, but this particular way will only work if you're going to undeposited funds. So in this case, we're going to receive the full amount. We're going to hit, go ahead and hit save and close. Now, when we go then to our to record what's in undeposited funds, this particular twenty dollars. So we're going to choose the twenty dollars here. We're going to tell it which account to go to. We're going to tell it PayPal if you have PayPal set up as a bank account. And then what you're going to actually do in this case to record the fees that your merchant processor is using is you're going to go ahead whatever account you already have set up in your chart of accounts. In this case here, I have PayPal fees set up as an expense. <clears throat> you can make a note if you'd like. And then again, you're going to enter this as a negative dollar amount. And then just make sure that your deposit total down here actually matches the amount that you're receiving from your payment processor. So once you have that done, go ahead and hit save and close and you're good. So those are the two different ways that you can go about using you know, your QuickBooks in order to get to your net payment actually received from the customer.